same time can be fun and risky. If you do not have an adequate knowledge on how to properly use the chemicals and laboratory equipments, you can experience all kind of harm. Going through a right laboratory equipment is very important. You cannot find success in your job before performing any kind of experiment if you do not have this knowledge about this laboratory equipment. Good day, future researchers! Welcome back to our YouTube channel. This is me again, Teacher Dean May, your research buddy in this journey. If you are new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell for more updates in research. The ability to make good observations is also essential to the development of other science process skills, and one of this is measuring. For today's lesson, we will continue our discussion about measurement. And this time, we're going to discuss about the different uh, modern laboratory tools that can be used in measuring. If you work in a laboratory setting, you undoubtedly encounter many kinds of expensive and complicated instruments and machines. You will benefit from learning how to use these resources. This is particularly true when you are supposed to use them when you are pursuing your research study or testing field. In a number of ways, not understanding what you are supposed to do or not understanding what you are doing will set you back. Laboratory instruments is a general term that can be used for all kinds of instruments, vessels, and other tools needed for operations in various laboratories, analysis, and synthesis. Laboratory instruments are exposed to some extreme chemical and physical influences and must simultaneously provide accurate measurement results and must have a long life and provide safety for the user. Because of the user-friendly software process, modern laboratory tools or modern laboratory instruments have also inter interfaces that can be used not only by experts but also by untrained employees. And because of technology, napakadami na rin na-develop na mga modern laboratory instruments na maaari natin gamitin when we are conducting our science investigatory project, especially those laboratory apparatus that can be used in measuring. Laboratory apparatus are the most common utensils and appliances that you need while performing hands-on activities in a laboratory. The laboratory apparatus depends upon the type of laboratory you are in and the experiment you are going to perform. Therefore, laboratory instruments have also need to be a high quality and be durable in order to meet the high standards in laboratory technology. In this lesson, this is the part two of our topic about measurement, which is the second basic science process skills. And we're going to familiarize ourselves in knowing all the different modern laboratory tools that can be used for measuring. Now, these are the table for laboratory apparatus, the traditional laboratory apparatus and the modern laboratory apparatuses. Last time, we discussed about the different traditional laboratory apparatus such as platform balance, graduated cylinder, meter stick, thermometer, beakers, Erlenmeyer flask, Florence flask, test tubes, tongs, and rocks, watch glasses, crucibles, droppers, pipettes, burette, and others. Now, let's talk about the different modern laboratory apparatus such as pH meter, colony counter, calorimeter, galvanometer, voltmeter, oscilloscope, micropipette, laboratory sensors, and others. Let's start with the pH meter. This is a pH meter, and a pH meter is a device that measures the changes in the activity of hydrogen ions in solution. When we say pH, it is a measurable parameter between the values of 0 and 14, provided the concentration of the solution does not exit, exit 1F. Solutions with a pH of less than 7 are acidic, whereas those with a pH greater than 7 are alkaline. How to calibrate this pH meter? The pH meter should be calibrated before each measurement using at least two standard buffer solutions of known pH values, typically around 4 and 7. Now, another modern 
laboratory tool is the colo is the colony counter. Colony counter are used to estimate a liquid culture's density of microorganisms by counting individual colonies on an agar plate, slide, mini gel, or petri dish. Colony counting can be tedious and time-consuming. Scan automatic colony counters provide efficient, complete, and accurate colony counting. These are the different types of colony counter. So we have the scan 100 manual colony counter with great ergonomics. This is the automatic colony counter essential features. The, and the, this one is the HD automatic colony counter. The counting can be accomplished manually, often with touch pressure and a digital counter. Or can be semi or fully automatic. With automatic counters, improvements center on increasing precision and accuracy, such as the ability to detect smaller colonies in low contrast media, illumination systems that increase visibility, direct image scanning and analysis capability, rapid multiple zone, bioassay plate analysis, and IQ or OQ documentation. Now let us proceed with calorimeter. Calorimeter is a device used to measure the heat flow of a chemical reaction or physical change. The process of measuring this heat is called calorimetry. This is a calorimeter. A basic calorimeter consists of a metal container of water above a combustion chamber in which a thermometer is used. This is a thermometer which is used to measure the change in water temperature. The basic principle is that heat released by the combustion chamber increases the temperature of the water in a measurable way. The temperature change may then be used to calculate the enthalpy change per mole of a substance A when substance A and B are reacted. Now, let's proceed with galvanometer. A galvanometer is a device used for detecting the presence of small current and voltage or for measuring their magnitude. The galvanometer is mainly used in bridges and potentiometer where they indicate the null deflection of zero current. It is an analog measuring device denoted by G that measures current flow using a needle deflection, this one caused by a magnetic field force acting upon a current carrying wire. Now, what are the use and applications of galvanometer? The galvanometer has the following applications. They are, number one, it is used for detecting the direction of current flows in the circuit. It also determines the null point of the circuit. The null point means the situation in which no current flows through the circuit and number two it is used for measuring the current and last the voltage between any two points of the circuit is also determined through galvanometer what are the applications of galvanometer the galvanometer has the following applications they are number one it is used for detecting the direction of current flows in the circuit it is also determines the null point of the circuit. The null point means the situation in which no current flows through the circuit. Number two, it is used for measuring the current. And number three, the voltage between any two points of the circuit is also determined through galvanometer. Num next, we have the voltmeter. It is an instrument used for measuring electrical potential difference between two points in an electric circuit. So what is a voltmeter? It is an analog voltmeter. An analog voltmeter moves a pointer across a scale in proportion to the circuit's voltage. A digital voltmeter provides a numerical display. Any measurement can be that can be converted to voltage can be displayed on a meter that is properly calibrated such measurements include pressure temperature and flow it works on the current principle that torque is generated by the current which induces because of measure and voltage and this torque deflects the pointer of the mesh of the instrument the deflection of the pointer is directly proportional to the potential difference between the points the voltmeter is also connected in parallel with the circuit. 
Next, let's have the oscill. Next, let us have the oscilloscopes. An oscilloscope is a device that allows you to see how voltage changes over time by displaying a waveform of electronic signals. An oscilloscope is an item of electronic test equipment that enables waveforms to be seen and in this way makes it very much easier to see any problems occurring in an electronic circuit. An oscilloscope are important tool in the Maori of the electronics engineer or tester. When you have a circuit that have constant voltages, a multimeter is a tool that can be used to measure a single number for voltage. This become redundant when you start building more complex circuits. This is where an oscilloscope comes in handy. An oscilloscope allows you to view how voltage changes over time. These voltages are called signals which are used to convey information such as an audio signal playing music on a loudspeaker. Some of the things that are displayed on screen on an oscilloscope shows is the measured signal of the voltage using a graph. The voltage is represented on a vertical axis and time on the horizontal axis. This display will this display will allow you to determine if the behavior of your circuit is working correctly. And an oscilloscope allows you to view how voltage changes over time. These voltages are called signals which are used to convey information such as an audio signal playing music on a loudspeaker. This display will also allow you to determine if the behavior of your circuits is working correctly. It will also allow you to locate any problems within your circuit like unwanted signals called noise. Now, let's proceed with the popular micro-pipette bronze. These are the Oxford pipettes and this one is the Gilson pipettes. This is what we call the micro-pipette. And these are utilized in the laboratory to transfer small quantities of liquid. Not only do micro-pipettes differ in size and volume dispense, but depending on those particular aspects, they are also require specific pipette tip and micro pipettes use as a disposable pipette tip to aspirate liquid. Note that the tip is the only part of the pipette that makes contact with the solution. A new tip is utilized for every sample in order to prevent cross contamination. What are the components of a micro pipette? Basic parts of a micro pipette include plunger button, tip injector button, volume adjustment dial, volume display, tip injector, and shaft. They differ in design, weight, plunger force, and overall precision. The next one is the laboratory sensors. In the broadest definition, a sensor is a device, module, machine or subsystem whose purpose is to detect events or changes in its environment and send the information to other electronics, frequently a computer processor. A sensor is always used with other electronics. Analog and digital laboratory sensors for benchtop and portable meters for measuring pH, conductivity, and oxygen. Analog and digital laboratory sensors for benchtop and portable meters for measuring pH, conductivity, and oxygen. Available in various materials and sensor lengths with different types of connection, digital memosense technology, and the specific laboratory sensors for food, water, and environmental applications or for chemical and pharmaceutical sectors. A sensor sensitivity indicates how much the sensor's output changes when the input quantity being measured changes. Other examples of laboratory sensors are the pH sensors, conductivity sensors, and oxygen sensors. 
hanggang dito na lang muna ang ating discussion about measurement. Dahil sa susunod na video, pag-uusapan naman natin what is the difference between the inferring and predicting, which is the third and fourth basic science process skill here in research. Stay tuned on our YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell for more updates and research. See you on our next vlog. Bye!